This is Dwayne at RealFixesRealFast.com and in this video we're going to talk about building an engine. I've got Mike with me here. He's our engine builder. He's got the most experience here and really knows what he's doing. So he's going to give us a lot of information about building the engine. Now in this particular case we're building a Chevy 350 5.7 engine. There's options to get a rebuild engine or you can rebuild your own. Why we're going to rebuild this engine is because we're going to upgrade it. We're going to make it stronger. Mike, tell us about that. Well, we're going to go to, instead of a 5.7 350, which is what it was, we're going to go to a 383, which is a 6 liter. So we'll have 30 more cubic inches over the old motor. But besides that, we'll have a lot more torque out of this motor because it's a big, heavy truck. So we'll get more torque, more torque power. And sometimes they call that a stroker motor. Yes. What does a stroker motor mean? A stroker motor means it's got a longer stroke. So what we're doing is essentially we're going from a 3, 4, 8 inch stroke to a 3, 7, 5 inch stroke. So it gives it more arm, more stroke to pull the piston and rod up and down. If you're going to rebuild a stock motor, you basically don't have to change parts or make any alterations. You're going to see us make some alterations here because of the stroker effect. You've got the same size crankcase, but we're going to put bigger parts in it. So if you're going to be rebuilding a stock engine, pretty much the same thing going back in that came out, then you can ignore some of these alterations we're going to make. But if you want to build a stroker motor or make some alterations, then you can probably get some tips from this video. As you know at realfixesrealfast.com, all our videos are real. Nothing's really made up here. We really rebuilt this engine. It took us about two months to do it. Now normally it wouldn't take that long. Our reason is we were working on other things to make a living at the time, working on other customer cars. We had to wait, order parts. We got some parts in that were wrong, had to reorder. We had to send things to the machine shop and wait on that. It took us about two months. Then turn the engine over. So we can pull the pan off and see what's going on inside there. I'm going to take off the windage tray. Take off the oil pump. I'm going to pull off this first main or the second main. And sure enough, it's bad. Now it's time to turn it back over so we can take the heads and the intake off. Pulling the intake bolts. I'm not too worried about where the rocker arms go because I'm putting all brand new push rods in. So they're going to have to wear back in again anyway. Now we're going to start pulling heads. Now we'll take the timing cover off. Spiders and the lifters out now. Spider, lifter locks. Now we're going to take the time chain off. Now we got the cam holding plate we're going to pull off. Now we should be able to pull the cam out. Now before you pull an engine apart, if you're going to rebuild it, you always want to mark which rods come out of what if you're not going to resize them. I probably will resize this, but I like to mark them anyway. That way the rods go back in the same holes. I'm going to get the stamps out and stamp them so I know that that's number two. Now I'm marking this one number two because this is number two cylinder. And this is number one cylinder. This is 1357 on this side and this is 2468 on this side. You want to stamp it right on the rod on the side. Don't stamp it right here. A lot of people like to stamp it there. That ruins the rod. Now 
Now you got your rod stamp number two. You know it was always a number two hole. Okay, you want to stamp the rod and you want to stamp the cap so you don't get them mixed up. If you get these mixed up, the motor will never turn over. Okay, when you have a spun bearing, it might be in the spot where it's supposed to be or it might be turned around, but when you have a spun bearing, you're not going to have no tang left on your bearing. Your tang's going to be totally gone. Okay, this, this is a good bearing that hasn't spun. See, the tang is still there. And this is a bad bearing that did spin. It ripped the tang right off of it and spun around. Now if you're going to use your pistons over to be gentle and tap them out, it's not recommended. Especially this motor's got 190,000 miles on it, so we're going to replace everything. Now you got all four pistons out, the rods back on them, and they're all stamped with one, two, three, four, so we can keep them straight. I'm taking off the uh, one piece for main sill housing, sliding it back so I can get the crankshaft out. Taking off the main cap. The mains have numbers cast right into them. There's number one. Number two, these main caps have the numbers and they also have arrows you can see on them. Those arrows always point towards the front, towards the crankshaft. This is a cam bar. We're going to knock the uh, cam bearings out. So we can send it to the machine shop. We start with the last one. Slide it through. Stick something there to hold it, and then you expand it. Turn it. Then you hit it. And there's the bearing. We'll show you what we're doing when we go back in together. These cam bearings don't go just anywhere. They have numbers on them and they go in certain spots. Put your main caps back on because we're going to have it line honed. Now on the back side you need to take the galley plugs out. Quarter inch square drive. If you're really going to rebuild the engine the right way, you need to take all the freeze plugs out, put new ones in. 